Magellan and the Search for Ophir. Magellan's contemporary, Duarte Barbosa, wrote that the people of Malacca, in modern Malaysia, had described to him an island group known as the Laquios whose people were as rich and more eminent than the Chins, Chinese, and that traded much gold, and sliver in bars silk rich cloth, and much very good wheat, beautiful porcelains and many other merchandise. However, Barbosa was not the only one to mention the Laquios during Magellan's time. About a decade after Magellan's voyage, Ferdinand Pinto had wrote in his journal of the experience of his crew and himself, after being shipwrecked on the Laquios. Pinto was traveling through the Malay archipelago at the time and he describes the Laquios Islands as belonging to large group of islands many of which were rich in gold and silver. He mentions that at that time the Portuguese were familiar with Japan and China, and also with the island of Mindanao or Mindanao, so the Laquois Islands must have been somewhere between these two areas. Furthermore, Pinto even goes as far as to give the exact latitude of the main Laquios Island. He states that it was situated at 9 and 20 latitude and that the island was on a meridian similar to that of Japan. Now, at Magellan's time all exploration was done by latitude sailing and dead reckoning, as no navigational clocks were in use. Latitude sailing required fixing one's latitude precisely by means of an astrolabe. Longitude could only be approximated roughly by using a patent log to track the distance the ship has traveled in any particular direction. When Magellan began to suspect he was nearing the region of the Moluccas he deliberately steered on a north course and then turned westward at a latitude of 13 degrees north according to both Pigafetta and Albo. Pigafetta states that the reason was to get near the port of Gatacara which was the Katagara mentioned by Ptolemy. In the book Magellan's Voyage Around the World, the author, Charles E. Noll offers another possible reason for Magellan steering so far to the north of the Moluccas. He notes that Magellan himself had rewrote part of Barbosa's book referring to the Laquios, and in his version Magellan substituted Tarsus and Ophir for the world Laquios. Although these lands are not mentioned in Magellan's contract, less than six years after his voyage, Sebastian Cabot signed a contract with Spain which did have as one of its objectives the lands of Tarshish and Ophir. Magellan had been to Malacca himself, and probably many have heard of the community of Filipino workers and merchants that lived there under the protection of the King of Malacca. Probably many of you already know of the theory that Black Henry, the slave Magellan purchased at Malacca, may have belonged to the Filipino community of Malacca as he was able to speak with the natives at Limasawa. Whatever the case, we know from his own pen that Magellan thought the Liquios Islands might be the same as the biblical Tarsus and Ophir, and it may be that his idea of the position of the Liquios was partly shaped by Barbosa's book, and partly by information he may have received from Filipinos in Malacca. Was the fact that Black Henry was able to converse with the people living at the latitude given by Pinto, but not with the people of Samar or Leyte, coincidence, or something planned in advance from information gleaned in Malacca. Even after their discovery, many still regarded the Philippines, rich in gold and silver, to be the same as ancient Tarsus and Ophir. Father Colin, referred to them as such in the early 1600s and even at the turn of the century, the Philippine historian Pedro Paterno still claimed that the Philippines were really Tarsus and Ophir. Whatever one thinks of these claims though, the search for the biblical El Dorado appears to have played an important role in the European discovery of the Philippines. Ophir. The ancient name of the islands of the Philippines. Only the descendants of Levites Datu Gerson, Datu Merari and few descendants of Datu Kohat reached the island of Ophir, but the high priest comes in the lineage of Aaron left in Yerushalam. People in the islands of Ophir speaks ancient Hebrew language. Who is Ophir? Ophir written in the Old Testament of the Bible 1 Kings 22 48, 9 28 and 22 49. Psalms 45 9, Isaiah 13 12. Job 22-24, 28-16, 1 24-4, 1 Genesis 10 25-26. In Genesis 10 25-30 and Haber were born two sons, the name of one was Peleg, for his days was the earth divided and his brother's name was Yokdan. And Yokdan begat Almodad, and Shalef, and Hazarmaveth, and Yerah, and Hadoram, and Uzal, and Dekla, and Obal, and Abimael, and Sheba, and Ophir, and Havilah, and Yabab all these were the sons of Yotan. And their dwelling was from Mesha, as thou goest unto Sefer a mount of the east. The language of Ophir. The language of Haber is the same language of Adam and when the language was confused, only Haber retained the original language of Adam and was called Hebrew from Haber's name and therefore the language of his two sons Peleg and Yotan will be Hebrew and the language of Ophir the son of Yotan will be Hebrew also. The language of Abraham. Peleg's son is Ru, Ru's son is Sarug, Sarug's son is Nacor, Nacor's son is there, there had three sons Abram become Abraham the Hor, and Haran the father of Lot. Abraham is Hebrew in Genesis 14 13. 
historians said about Ofer. The Western writers garlanded the Philippine land with more names such as Maniolas, Ofer, Islas del Oriente, Islas del Poniente, Archipelago de San Lazaro, Islas de L.S., Island of Mortars, Archipelago de Magallanes, and Archipelago de Legaspi. The Western writers and ocean navigators called the islands Ofer before the Western people arrived and renamed it as Filipinas from the name of King Felipe of Spain. When the first European historian set their foot in the land of Ofer, it was written by historian Gregorio F. Said in page 2 and page 24 of History of the Filipino People, that Padre Chirino, an eminent Jesuit historian, found in Tagalog language that it has the mystery and obscurities of the Hebrew language. Therefore, in the islands of Ofer, the people speaks ancient Hebrew language. Whereas Tarshish and Ofer. During the early period of European colonization, the biblical lands of Tarshish and Ofer, or Tarsus and Ofer, as they were called, held the imagination of European explorers. Not only was it believed that the lost tribes of Israel were to be found in these lands, but also untold wealth. To these kingdoms, King Solomon and King Hiram of Tyre sent ships for trade that brought from Ofer great plenty of almig trees and precious stones. A Kings 10:11. Concerning Tarshish, it is written. Fro the king's ships went to Tarshish with the servants of Hiram, every three years once came the shops off Tarshish bringing gold and silver, ivory, and apes, and peacock. 2 Chronicles 9:21. In Samuel purchases well-known travel compendium purchases pilgrim, he devotes the entire first chapter to a discussion of Tarshish and Ophir. In particular, he argues strenuously that it is beloved Britain and not Spain that deserve the title, as the modern Tarshish and Ophir. Curiously, in Carreri's journal of his visit to the Philippines, he mentions that he would not go into the argument raging in Europe at that time over whether the Philippines was originally populated by the descendants of biblical Tarshish. In modern times, scholars have attempted to relate Tarshish and Ophir with a number of areas, none of which include the Philippines. However, things were different in Europe prior to the discovery of the Philippines. There, they believed that Tarsus and Ophir were some lands far to the east of biblical Israel. Their reasoning was actually quite logical. King Solomon built the port from which ships departed for Tarsus and Ophir at Ezion Geber on the coast of the Red Sea. The return journey took about three years, so obviously the location must be somewhere far to the east. In modern times, some scholars have tried to suggest that Solomon's navy circumnavigated Africa to reach the Mediterranean, but the seafaring Europeans of those times would not consider such nonsense. Tarsus and Ophir were unknown lands beyond the golden Chersonese of Ptolemy. Their discovery would undoubtedly bring untold wealth and great fame in the minds of the people of those times. But what, one may ask, has this to do with the Philippines? The truth is that the search for Tarsus and Ophir was directly related to the discovery of these islands by Magellan.